Jesus died to save the entire world. Today, he's training us in grace so that we can go out and influence someone else's life. That's why I'm so grateful for the friends and partners of this ministry who freely and cheerfully give financial offerings to support us. You understand our vision and you help us in so many ways to reach those who are searching for hope in the midst of darkness. Thank you for empowering us to expand God's kingdom worldwide. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit CrefloDollarMinistries.org today. God bless you. Uh, let's take it just a little farther here now. Uh, the life... And, and, and the fact that believing is the condition for receiving life, you see that clear. Believing is the condition for receiving life. Again, shows that life is of grace. Life is of grace. The life that we have is life that is of grace. We keep trying to figure out how we can take credit for the life that we have. The life that we have is of the grace of God. Amen. All right. And so it is of faith. Romans 4, 16. Let's go there. It is of faith that it might be by grace. I, I, I'm going to show you, and I think you already see it. There, you, you can't separate faith from grace. You already see this. And we, 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 it ain't no such thing as, well, the grace folks say that and the faith folks say that. If you got one of them, you got the other one. You can't, you can't separate this. Look at this. He says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. You, you, you cannot have, <laughs> he said, believe that you have this, this life, uh, Believe that you have this life through the name of Jesus. The consequences is grace and truth comes, and then that grace will reign unto eternal life unto to Jesus Christ. I don't see how you can separate faith from grace. In fact, I think what we got to be careful about is trying to separate faith from grace and then start using our faith for law-based stuff. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. And then you turn faith into like this magic wand. And you use it to fulfill everything except what grace has made available. See, grace has already made everything available. But we separate it from grace, and now what's happening? It, it's almost like uh, when purpose is not understood, abuse is inevitable. So what about, what about grace? It cannot function without faith and life can't produce, the life of grace can't be seen and produced without this faith. So whatever is of grace is going to have to be by faith because in believing you have life. <laughs> Ooh, man, if we'd have heard this thing, you know. Nobody wants to talk about really the foundation of stuff. We want to already get to the goody-goody. I'm at the goody-goody. I'm still thinking about that, that black velvet background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, okay, so you've been through some stuff. And, and I don't make light of that. And a lot of things you didn't understand. That don't mean we're supposed to be mad at everybody because we didn't understand it. We, we, we understand it now. But what it means is the beauty of that grace diamond should move you to want to share that with somebody else who's stuck in the background. And you can show them, no, 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 you're not meant to be stuck on the black. You're meant to stand in front of it so we can see the brilliance 
of your life that is now in grace. Now look at your life now, now that it's in grace. Compare it to what you came out of. You can't even understand why you like you are, are you? Can you? I mean, you look at stuff in your life, you like, you know, you look at certain stupid stuff you used to want to do, and you're like, where'd that go? And then you see the continuous glory and brilliance of this grace. And you begin to just be grateful and so thankful for God. And then you try to figure out, somebody say, how y'all do that? You, you don't have but one answer. You, I mean, you, 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 don't, you don't have but how y'all do that. I believe in Jesus. I believe he's the Christ. I believe he's the son of God. Yeah. And in believing, I have life. Hallelujah. Uh, through his name. And the name is what you are and what you've done. Glory be to God. Through his name, through his authority, I have that. And this grace rules unto eternal life. Yay, yay. <laughs> wow. This is in the Gospel of John. Sounds like this is going to be a grace book. You're going to learn probably some things about the, the Gospel of grace in this book that's just going to absolutely just blow your mind. So grace and truth is, is, is what we're looking at. Now, I want to remind you of something here. Go to 2 Corinthians 3 and 7. I need you to remember that the law given through Moses, look at what they call the law that was given through Moses. You ready for this now? Watch this. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious. All right, so let's stop just for a moment now. What was written and engraven in stone? Well, you had those 10 in, engraven in stones, and then you had the rest of them in, st in tablets. Remember, it was trying to keep the Ten Commandments through the administration of rules. Okay? Nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments. The problem was you were trying to perfect it through rule keeping. So somebody says, throw the Ten Commandments away. No, 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 no. The Ten Commandments without the Holy Spirit is going to minister death. And that's what happened. Now go back and read the Old Testament. People died for all kinds of reasons. They, you better not touch the bottom of the mountain. Touch the bottom of the mountain, you got dead folks everywhere. <laughs> better not complain. I mean, there were like, what, what, 40 some thousand people that fell dead for complaining? What if that was today? <laughs> I'd be preaching to myself for 10 minutes, and then I'll join you. <laughs> Are y'all following what I'm saying? Let me remind you, he calls it the ministration of death. That which was written, all right, what was written and engraven, okay? So together, they're the law. But then we take the moral side out, the Ten Commandments, it's perfect, it's flawless, it's, it's all that, but it's too perfect for fallen man to try to keep something like that through keeping rules. So you say, all right, uh, the way I'm going to keep law number six is I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't eat that, I can't do that, I can't eat that, gotta wear a, you know, a long dress, can't wear no pants, gotta do that. And then they were hoping by, by making it mandatory that you keep all the rules that somehow it would bring to pass the morality of the law or the, or, or the Ten Commandments. So what changed was, is we went in the New Testament and we found out there was a better way to do this because everybody was dying. Everybody was dying. I mean, nobody could keep it. Everybody was dying. Everybody in the wilderness was dying. And he was just like, dude, we got to do something, but we're not going to have nobody. 
okay? And the only reason they did the law in the first place because they were doing crazy stuff. There was no standard or nothing. I mean, brothers killing brothers, and they're like, well, well, we got to put some kind of standard in place until we can get, get this thing going. But it, it wasn't like that surprised God. God wasn't progressively doing things. He already f had it all. Figured out. <laughs> it, it wasn't even figured out. He, he, he allowed what happened to happen because he knew when you, when man fell in the garden, what had to happen to get him back right? <laughs> he wasn't responding to how you was acting. You go cut somebody out, well, I guess I got to do this to him now because he did that. No, 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 no. He, 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 he called the end from the beginning. Yeah. 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 We, we still get this idea that Whatever God's doing, he's doing it as a result of what you did. Ah, I said it, I said it. You do, you do, because I thought that. Well, he's doing it as a result of what, of what I did. No, no, no. He done already did what he done did. What you do ain't going to change what he done already did and has already made provision for whatever you do. That go that pearl in front of that black velvet background, boy. Wow. Wow. So, law by Moses was called the ministration of death, and that's exactly what happened. Now, isn't it amazing that a lot of the church, they're fighting the message of grace so they can get to keep the ministration of death? Yeah. Because you know Creflo don't lost his mind. <laughs> Telling them people they can just go on sin without consequences. Well, first of all, I ain't say that. <laughs> that was wrong right now. People talking about what somebody done said, and they don't even know what somebody done said. Hush your mouth. You, you, you're, you're fighting to operate in the ministration of death. Now, how did he correct it? He says, I got a better covenant with better promises. So here's what we're going to do. I already know you can't keep none of this, okay? So ain't no use of me trying. So I'm going to take Jesus, who can keep all of it, and you're going to go in, all oh, y'all going to go in on his ticket. Amen. But it's going to require you to believe in the Son of God, believe that he is the Christ, in order for that to happen. Because you ain't going to be able to do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. It ain't going to work. He the only way in. Because you got some stains somewhere. Everybody say somewhere. Somewhere. You got some stains somewhere. They might be hidden stains. You know some of them stains. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't going to go there. You, you, you know. Some of them stains you got to have the brush and the Clorox. And, and I don't, I, and, and because I think we miss this foundational teaching, this progression here, you, you see that there's no way your involvement can fix something that's perfect. So he said, I'm going to send you my spirit, and the Holy Spirit is now going to be, be the new administrator for morality. And so Paul comes along, he says, it is still good, children, for you to obey your parents, Okay. Somebody says, well, they're going to take a man that's right there. No, no, no. What he is saying is, it's still good for you to obey your parents, but I'm not dependent on you to do it in your own effort. I am here to help you. That's why God poured me on the inside of you. And the first thing I did is release the, the love of God on the inside of you. And now you're going to know how to do some stuff by, by, by intuition. You just know that's wrong without reading no scripture. You just know you're not supposed to do that without reading no scripture. And that, that's what happened, I think, was with uh, Joseph. Uh, now, let me see. Yeah, yeah Joseph was um, uh, as a, a servant at his, um, yeah, Potiphar's wife. Yes. And, uh, and, and she came on to him, you know, uh, cougar, how, you know. And, 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 and she came on to the young man. And when she came on to the young man, here's what he did. Watch this. Watch this. It ain't red, no nothing. Watch this. Watch this. He ran. And, and read the scripture. He knew in his heart that that would displease God and, 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 and his master. He knew it in his heart. That's what he said. 
In this new covenant, this is going to be a hard thing. I'm going to write my laws on your heart and write them in your mind. And you ain't got to teach you what is true or not. You're going to know because I'm going to be in there. And by intuition, you go going to know that you know that you know that you know. Boy, what a time we're going to have in this thing right here. Okay. So, under the law, uh, works replace grace. If you back up, Romans chapter 11 and 6, works replace grace. And religion is based in works replacing grace. And that's what's going on in churches right now. Works replacing grace. So if, if that's a part of the law, then you are frustrating the grace of God. Imagine, let me, let me bring where we are now. You're trying to do something for somebody for free, and they keep trying to work for it. Isn't that frustrating? Oh, no, 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 I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Oh, I'm, I'm going to give you a lift. No, but take this five dollars. I know you need some gas. No, I, I, I want to do it for you. No, just go ahead and take it. Look, I got to go. <laughs> you're, you're frustrated because what you're trying to do for no cost, they feel like they need to do it so they can feel better. And, it's, and, and, and what they're wanting to do is motivated by guilt. So you know it, it's not there. So we have to have a whole reset when the Bible says repent for, uh, for, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Re, re, he said, actually, what it says, repent and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent means to literally change your mind or change your thinking about what you used to think about. So what happens when you have, you know, you got one side preaching, all right, so here's how we ought to be living. No, 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 no. You got to talk about hell. You got to talk about hell. Why? We don't plan on going. <laughs> Why we got to talk about hell? You plan on going? What are you talking about hell? I, talk <laughs> I ain't plan on going. You need to know nothing about hell. Why? Because since I've been under grace, we, we, we good. Ain't nobody going there but somebody who want to go there. You trying to say ain't nobody going to hell? You might be going to hell, but we're not going because we believe in Jesus and now we have eternal life through his name, praise God. And we got grace and truth, hallelujah. And this grace rules unto eternal life. So why need to be talking about hell? Well, so the people who, the people who, who go into hell, well, I mean, you know, I'll tell them, all right, you need to get saved or you're going to hell. And then I, I don't. Once they get saved, I, I don't want to talk to them about hell. I'm not denying the existence of hell. I'm not denying that people are going to go to hell. I'm just denying that you who believe in Jesus are going to go to hell. You who believe in Jesus, y'all ain't going to hell. Y'all ain't going to hell. I don't care what you read. I don't care what people say. That, you know, some folks, if you cough wrong, they want to put you in hell right quick. You're going to hell for that cough. You're going to hell because you didn't cover your mouth. You should have covered your mouth when you coughed. See, there you're going to hell. You beat up about 3 o'clock, I guarantee you. <laughs> no, man. That's not us. That's not us. Aren't you glad that's not us? Amen. Use your imagination to see grace like a diamond fixed in front of a black velvet background. Oh, my goodness. Amen. So the law was given through Moses. Now think about this. This is cool. This is a good one. Uh, the law was given by Moses. Moses, a mere human instrumentality, a member of the sinful human race. The law was given by that dude who was a member of a sinful, fleshy human race. But not so with grace and truth. That came by Jesus Christ. It could not have come by Moses. There's only one, one entity, one person that was able to bring it to you. And it was Jesus Christ, who, by the way, was both the son of man 
and the Son of God. So, glory to God. So, the Son of God became the Son of man so that the sons of men could become the sons of God. You, you follow what I'm saying? That couldn't happen with no Moses. Woo-woo! Mm, mm, mm. So these two persons are else were contrasts. Contrast, Moses and uh, Jesus, all through John, you'll see the contrast. You know, that's all Jewish people talk about, what the law of Moses said. And Jesus even had to say, but yeah, but I say unto you. Okay. So you're going to see the contrast there. Um, you remember, what is this, Hebrews 3 and 3? Go to Hebrews 3 and 3. Let's read verses 3, 4, 5, and 6 so we can see something here. I'm almost done. He says, For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. Verse 4, For every house is built by some man, but he that buildeth all things is God. Come on, 5. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house, as a servant, for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. Number six. But Christ, Christ as a son over his own house. <laughs> Whose house are we? He says, we are of the house that Christ is over. If we hold fast, look, look what he's talking about holding fast to. The confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. You know what he's asking us to do? Don't let go of your believing. Hold fast. Have confidence. I'm the righteousness of God. Have confidence. I have grace and I have peace from Jesus Christ. Glory to God and truth from Jesus Christ. So, there's a level in this book, in this study, you're going to see the preeminence of Jesus over Moses. You're going to see it. And the preeminence of Jesus over Moses is going to be indicative of the preeminence of grace over the law.